In this video, we present a simplified summary of Louis A. Taft's story, A Pirate Treasure in Massachusetts, which appeared in the summer 1967 issue of the magazine Long John Latham's True Treasure. Set in the mid-1600s, this piece chronicles the forgotten tale of a long-lost Spanish treasure, captured by Dutch privateers, recaptured by Spaniards, and finally stolen by English pirates before vanishing without a trace somewhere along the coast of New England. Enjoy. There exists a distinct possibility that a great fortune comprising gold dust, pearls, precious stones, and Spanish pieces of eight lies buried on the south shore of Massachusetts, a mere stone's throw from the bustling city of Boston. Long forgotten records nestled within the colonial archives of that state allude to this intriguing prospect. The tale of this treasure and its odyssey to New England unfolds like a gripping melodrama chronicling the exploits of pirates, treasure-laden ships, and the treacherous waters of the Spanish Main. The saga commences in 1653 when a Dutch privateer, christened the De Heilige Geest, Holy Ghost, hailing from the bustling port of Amsterdam, made its mark harassing Spanish shipping along the sun-drenched coast of Central America. However, Fortune turned against the audacious privateer when it was unexpectedly beset by a formidable Spanish force, leading to its capture and subsequent refuge in a nearby port for vital repairs. The remaining Dutch privateersmen met a grim fate at the hands of their captors. With the robust Dutch vessel now under their control, the cunning Spaniards concocted a ruse to confound the Dutch privateers, notorious for intercepting treasure-laden ships bound for the ports of Spain. The Holy Ghost was surreptitiously laden with a general cargo before several stout iron-bound chests and kegs were covertly brought on board and securely fastened to the floor of the captain's cabin. Setting sail for Spain under the Dutch flag and proudly displaying her unmistakable Dutch name on the stern, the vessel embarked on a journey shrouded in enigma. Yet ill fortune dogged the Holy Ghost, buffeted by relentless violent storms that blew her far off course the vessel's hull succumbed to the punishing onslaught of the waves, causing her seams to split. With the crew toiling ceaselessly at the pumps to stave off disaster, provisions dwindled and the drinking water turned fetid, compelling Captain Emmanuel Rodriguez, the Spanish master, to chart a course for the respite of the West Indian island of Barbados, seeking to replenish supplies and effect repairs, and with England at peace with Spain at the time. Rodriguez raised the Spanish flag and guided the beleaguered vessel into the harbor of Bridgetown, Barbados. Governor Searles of Barbados extended a warm welcome to the Spaniards, ensuring that their ship found safe harbor under the protective gaze of the fort's cannons. Every effort was made to assist them in replenishing their supplies of fresh water and provisions. However, concealing a cargo laden with gold dust and precious stones proved to be a formidable challenge. It was presumed that only Captain Rodriguez and the pilot of the Holy Ghost were privy to the existence of the chests and kegs, securely locked within the captain's cabin. Yet, in a remarkably short span of time, it seemed as though word of the fortune had spread like wildfire across the island. Unemployed sailors, indentured servants and intrepid adventurers began to congregate in dimly lit grog shops and secluded hideaways, clandestinely deliberating the audacious prospect of purloining the vast treasure. The audacious scheme posed considerable peril for the Spaniards remained vigilant. Although a number of the crew ventured ashore each day, they invariably returned to the sanctuary of the Holy Ghost before nightfall. In the cover of darkness, the glow of watch lanterns served as a silent testament to the ever-watchful sentinels on duty. One stifling afternoon, several desperate adventurers, cleverly disguised as native fishermen, stealthily approached the Spanish treasure-laden vessel in native dugout canoes. While eight Spaniards manned the ship, only two stood watch, with the others toiling below deck. The sentries, perhaps less vigilant than they should have been, were caught off guard. Without warning, six Englishmen, armed to the teeth with cutlasses and pistols, clambered over the gunwale and swiftly closed in on the unsuspecting watchmen. Startled and overwhelmed, the two Spaniards relinquished their weapons and leaped overboard, leaving their comrades below deck defenseless. Seizing the opportunity, the pirates, bolstered by additional accomplices, swiftly hoisted anchor and deftly navigated the Holy Ghost out from beneath the looming threat of the fort's cannons. The brig Juno of London spied the treasure-laden ship 150 miles off the rugged Cape Cod coast. The pirate crew found themselves in dire straits, 
grappling with an acute shortage of sustenance and potable water, with many among them succumbing to the debilitating grip of scurvy. Their captain, a polished scoundrel by the name of Robert Harding, appealed for aid. Captain Gilbert Crane of the Juno, moved by their plight, extended a measure of supplies and offered to guide their ship to the bustling port of Boston. However, Harding, with a hint of defiance, declined the offer, though he consented to allow the Juno to escort their ship to the sheltered confines of Nantasket Bay. Upon the brig's arrival in Boston, Captain Crane expeditiously apprised the authorities of the enigmatic ship nestled in the tranquil waters of Nantasket Bay, urging them to seize the vessel and detain its crew. He forthrightly asserted his belief that the Holy Ghost harbored a crew of brazen buccaneers. Responding decisively, the Council of the Bay Colony dispatched a contingent of soldiers to Nantasket, where they promptly apprehended Captain Harding and four of his men discovered ashore. In an attempt to exonerate themselves, Harding brandished a letter of mark bearing the seal of Amsterdam, asserting that he and his crew were well within their rights to capture an enemy vessel, given England's hostilities with the Netherlands at the time. However, he conveniently omitted the fact that the Holy Ghost had been under Spanish control when they seized her. Following several days of intense scrutiny and fruitless investigation, the Council, lacking substantiating evidence to the contrary, reluctantly permitted the pirates to return to their ship. Before releasing him, the officials cautioned Harding that his vessel was at liberty to navigate in and out of any port under their jurisdiction, albeit subtly advising him to set a course for Salem. The wily pirate captain could discern the authorities' lingering suspicion, yet with ailing crewmen aboard and a scarcity of provisions, he found himself with little choice but to heed the veiled directive. Two days hence, the Holy Ghost sailed into the tranquil embrace of Salem Harbor. However, the official disposition towards the enigmatic vessel had undergone a marked transformation. Fresh tidings had arrived in Boston from a ship hailing from the West Indies, bearing damning accounts of the piratical escapade at Barbados and tantalizing reports of the boundless riches ferried by the pirate ship. Captain Harding and his men found themselves in chains once more. The Holy Ghost, their enigmatic vessel, was seized. Harding faced relentless interrogation, this time regarding the fate of the Spanish seamen who had vanished when the ship fell into the clutches of the pirates. Despite a thorough search of the ship from stem to stern, no sign of the Spaniards or the coveted treasure was unearthed. The captured crewmen could have met a grim end and been cast overboard, but the whereabouts of the elusive treasure remained a confounding enigma. Meticulous probing of the crew unraveled a crucial detail. The Holy Ghost had made a solitary landfall subsequent to departing from Barbados, anchoring fleetingly at Pemaquid, Maine, solely to replenish its water stores. This left Nantasket as the lone possible location where the treasure could have been spirited away from the clutches of the pirate craft. The burning question lingered. Had the Holy Ghost carried a treasure when it was commandeered by the pirates? According to an affidavit signed by Matthew Hill, a seaman of Bridgetown, the Spanish pilot had divulged that the ship harbored a trove comprising a chest brimming with gold dust, a mother load of jewels and pearls, and seven hogsheads of pieces of eight alongside other valuable cargo. Governor Searles of Barbados, in correspondence with the authorities in Boston, alluded to the significant wealth transported by the Holy Ghost. During the incarceration of the pirates in Salem, a missive from Governor Searles reached the magistrates of Boston, formally apprising them of the piracy at Bridgetown and beseeching them to repatriate the prisoners to Barbados for trial. However, the Massachusetts Council and the House of Deputies found themselves at odds over the course of action. Undoubtedly, the pirates were subjected to coercion and inducements in a bid to extract the whereabouts of the treasure. Ultimately, Captain Harding and two of his subordinates were each held under a bail of 1,000 pounds, while the remaining pirates were dispatched back to Barbados to face the swift sword of justice. Come October of 1654, the Council released the three surviving prisoners under the stipulation that they depart the colony without delay. Records indicate that they embarked on a vessel bound for England. The likelihood of the three surviving pirates returning to unearth the treasure remains a long shot, though not entirely implausible. If they did not, then perchance within the expanse encompassing Nantasket, perhaps on one of the islands nestled in the bay, an incalculable fortune may lie buried, much like other fabled pirate treasures guarded by the silent sentinels of the ill-fated Spanish seamen, 
Someday, perchance, an intrepid soul may chance upon this elusive bounty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and would like to help support this channel, please visit the website truetalesofburiedtreasure.com where you can find vintage magazines for sale and browse individual treasure stories by region. You can find this website by clicking the link in the description. Until next time, happy treasure hunting.